The fact that this exists for me, that this is an option in my future, it gives me such hope that someone can experience this who has been dreaming about this their whole life as an Orthodox Christian. I came and I found exactly what I was looking for. There's a solidarity and a oneness of mind and spirit that you find here at the seminary that strengthens you. This spiritual pursuit ends up being, I think, a lot more of a spiritual journey than anybody expects. Okay, so over to you. All right. Okay. Um, well, just leading up to. Um, this analogy, these analogies, um, like to talk about why Socrates mm -hmm. um, is using these analogies. I've been on my own for a long time, um, and I've had to wade through many different philosophies, um, many different worldviews. Orthodoxy um, fulfills all the needs of man's soul. Fulfills our need to have understanding, not just, um, un just, not just knowledge, not just an ideology, not just a set of beliefs, but we get to behold the truth. I just, I just think that it, w it could be something that looking from the outside, you would think, oh, that's nice, you know, you can learn, learn more about your faith as if it's just putting information in your head. But that's not the way to really learn orthodoxy anyway because orthodoxy is a way of life a way of being it's who you are not just an ideology that you agree with and that's part of the whole point of what people have to learn here at spots is how to be how to be an orthodox christian so there has to be one heck of a comeback here. <laughs> yeah. I'm Mateo Sh Matthew Ferens, um, and I'm a faculty member at the seminary. I teach art history predominantly. Uh, this year I'll be teaching also bioethics. Uh, and um, so I've been already affiliated with the monastery for, for at least a year. And... Um, I often consult with students on matters of iconology and iconography and things like that. So that's kind of my area of expertise. What's happening here in Etna is enormous. It is it is worldwide in, in the best way of understanding that in terms of souls of people in the world, right? To be part of something like that is an honor and a privilege. And I, you know, how can you deny such an opportunity? It really, for me, it comes down to that. Choosing something like a place to to study um, really is a soul-searching endeavor for any uh, student. Three years that you spend, three or four years, however long that you spend getting your bachelor's, right? 
will guide the rest of your life in what to do and how to um, answer problems that you've never thought you had you will have to answer before a problem within the Orthodox community um, how to advise other people if you yourself become um, a manager in a job a, a, a husband or a wife um, a, a father to a, a, a child and I know this from experience I was not thinking about those things when I was looking at, uh, into a bachelor's program uh, but but you know what uh, those are the things that are the most important things in life. St. Fortio Seminary does something completely different. It builds your life in ways that I have not seen. Live stream lectures are great. It gets the seminary's name out to the public and they can watch and see what we actually do learn here instead of, oh, I heard that you had a lecture by somebody, but now they can actually see what the lecture is about. I think we ended up having a hundred and gosh, 108, 100 and something people show up online and they were able to experience the same thing us as seminarians have had the opportunity to be exposed to. There was one deacon singing St. James who was left. The Holy Trinity, which is one essence with three hypotheses. We have uh, a number of people abroad who are interested in studying at the seminary, uh, not only in Latin America but also in Africa and perhaps even in Greece because our church in Greece does not have its own seminary because all schools in Greece must be run by the government according to Greek law. So as a result, all of the theological schools in Greece are run by the New Calendar Church, the State Church. The St. Photios Seminary is the first seminary of our church, that is the Church of the Genuine Orthodox Christians of Greece. So we're hoping that people from Greece and from Europe will be able to come to the seminary as well. Um, the main obstacle in this case is language because the classes are taught in English so the students who come will need to have a sufficient mastery of English in order to do the coursework. In order to study Orthodox theology one needs to study Greek. Uh, the Greek language is indispensable for an understanding of the Fathers, for an understanding of key patristic ideas. So Saint Photios Seminary very properly places a heavy emphasis on the acquisition of the Greek language. And in the classes which I've taught, I've frequently used Greek expressions or introduced Greek words and Greek concepts, and the students were all able to follow what I was saying because they had studied Greek. But I believe that the that Saint Photios seminary can serve a great role not only within the United States and Canada but also preparing clergy for Latin America, for Africa, for Europe and for any part of the world. So I'm very thankful that God has allowed me this opportunity to spend in, in the monastery and uh, teaching in the seminary, getting to know the students, getting to know the faculty, uh, being able to see how the, how the seminary functions and understanding that this is a key institution for the future of our church.
playing ping pong is always a blast. But we do also have a waterfall here, which has been renamed St. Peter's Falls after St. Peter the Aleut. There's also just beautiful scenery. We like to go there and just read. Just enjoy some of the weather. It's, it's really just an, a fun time. That's why it's in the fun category. We are <laughs> picking candles that Kat and all the help candle makers from Bearsville sent for us. I got this one with a butter and a bear on it. It's pretty wonderful. Like a squirrel. <laughs> what an opportunity. What an opportunity. And what an opportunity to be surrounded by other people your age that have the basic fundamental values, share the basic fundamental values. Um, you know, again, your, your late teens, your early 20s, your early 30s even, they're the most formative time of your life. You can, you can ask a question and have it answered. You can follow up with your professor after class um, because guess what? He's here because he's invested in your education. He's invested in your formation, not just in academic sense, but in a spiritual sense, first and foremost, and on a personal level, too. I learned before I, I got a Rasa the, the history of, of these uniforms. Um, it, it was originally the uniform of a philosopher in ancient times. A philosopher uh, practices for death. That's, that's the point of a philosopher. And so the early church took up that, that practice of, of being mournful for our sins, being dead to the world. Of course, an actual novice would be wearing, um, what would be, be wearing more? You have, there's a special hat and perhaps a vest as well in the Greek tradition. This is, this is the uniform for the seminary, in, in very simple terms. No, it's, it's pretty nice, I mean, it's good. I was happy when I got it. I, was, I, I put it on and <laughs> didn't take it off for the whole day, I mean. Honestly, when I put this on, I can, I can, I feel like I can do philosophy better. I can read philosophy and understand it better. <laughs> if you are interested in wearing black, Choose spots. I've heard those are simply the, the fabric um, for the temple. One of my favorite classes is definitely iconography. I really was always interested and fascinated by icons, and I always wanted to learn, but it's hard to learn by yourself. I don't think people understand that they're is a lot of theology regarding icons and you can't just start and paint an icon, um, just pick up a paintbrush and start painting an icon. There's a lot more to it. Something that I had really not understood before is that painting an icon is not just painting, it's literally praying. So while you're painting, you should be praying and that the icon that you paint portrays your spiritual life. So, you know, I do notice days where I'm not 
praying regularly or if I'm having a little trouble in my spiritual life, it shows through my icon. So I was having not a great day and I couldn't match any of the paints that I was trying to mix up. So you can definitely see that you have to be in tune with your spiritual life in order to paint an icon. And mix it really well. They need to be really well intermixed. Uh, as for my classmates, you know, they're constantly um, encouraging me. I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate. Everybody encourages each other. And I think we are all quick to help one another um, and that we are there for each other. I think I love doing my schoolwork with the other students because it helps me understand better and kind of getting their perspective on things. And, uh... 2016, St. Fotios Orthodox Seminary opens its doors. And Edna officially becomes a college town. 2017, the Denny Bar Distillery opens. Within a year, the second brewery opens. So now Edna has two breweries, a distillery, three or four coffee shops, and the seminary. Other than the monastery and some people at the convent, I had no social group as it was, as it can be referred to. And in my not having a social group, my fear then was loneliness. What's it going to mean if I come to a school with three students and that's it? In a large school, you can make a lot of superficial friends. You can have 10 people you're willing to do a study group with, and once study group's over, you don't want to talk to them again. Class is over, your friendship's over. You're forced to develop a deeper friendship with each of the people and develop it quicker. So through my being in such close proximity and then being the only people I was in proximity to, that fear of loneliness was proven to be unwarranted because we were able to develop a friendship that was far more than just we see each other and we study. I really would appreciate being able to, with my fellow students, Timothy, Kira, Xenia, all of them, drive up into the mountain, sit and look at the stars. What I've gained here from Spots is an orthodox mindset and friends. So it's paid back dividends from what I was expecting. And I think it was worth every minute of it. So on Thanksgiving, um, uh, many of the students got together to cook really nice dishes um, for the meal. Um, I think Tim and Vasilos were in charge of making both the turkey and ham. We had turkey and ham, and they, it was their first time ever cooking either of the dishes, and it turned out fantastic.
For Thanksgiving, uh, all of us students gathered together and because we wanted more of a homey environment, we gathered at St. Melanie's house to have a more homey Thanksgiving and um, we all cooked different meals and it was just very nice. But everything was delicious. All of the students ate with Father George. We are at St. Melania's preparing for first dinner for Thanksgiving. We will be having two Thanksgiving dinners today to get rid of all of the non-fasting food that we have. like to remember the military and the farmers and the health care workers. Remember them and thankful for them. So we're going to the top of a mountain. I don't know which mountain. Some mountain. We're going up to the top of a mountain and we have hot cocoa and today's Thanksgiving. It was very nice time uh, bonding with the other seminarians. We attempted to go on a hiking trip to the summit of the mountain, but it was snowing that day. just like a nice get together. We all went around and did that corny thing. We're like, what are you thankful for? <laughs> and it was nice hearing the different things everyone was thankful for. <laughs> <laughs> So for St. Nicholas Day, all of us students gathered together with some of the nuns from the convent and we got to spend time together decorating, you know, the seminary, we decorated the Christmas tree. Oh, yeah, that one has very kind of them. They prepared a very delicious meal for us. You have to show me how to build this thing. <laughs> we also had a gift exchange. Um, the fathers from the monastery and the mothers uh, gifted us some very wonderful things, um, very useful things. And now you have some ornaments for your own Christmas tree. Yeah. And you open it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just wait. More gift bags on the way. <laughs> Mints and candy canes. Very nice.
On behalf of the convent of St. Elizabeth, the St. Gregory Palamas Monastery, and the St. Photius Orthodox Theological Seminary, we greet you with the Feast of Christ's Nativity. Last year, mothers from the convent asked some of the female students to participate in their Christmas concert, and uh, they made us all outfits that um, represent our nationalities. And so I had a Romanian-inspired outfit, and they all handmade them. Um, it was interesting because they were asking for my measurements, and I was like, oh, okay, what is this for? But uh, then they surprised us with these beautiful outfits and we got to carol with them and there were so many people. Um, it was pretty overwhelming but it was such a blessing to be able to to chant with them. Good evening everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. On behalf of the Orthodox community of Etna, I would like to thank you all for coming tonight. It's been helpful to introduce our wider community to to us. Please enjoy another piece on the Dulcimer. It's based on the Carol the Little Drummond Boy. This past year, they decided that I would be the newest and most welcome addition to play the Hammer Dulcimer. Needless to say, that was an incredibly daunting task and request. The most I had performed before was, like, by myself. The most I performed for was somewhere on the order of 40 people. I had performed for a wedding. So I practiced and I practiced. Heck, I even learned a new song. It's been good as a sort of introduction for those members of the community who have not before been as comfortable with approaching us just, you know, out in public. So it's, I think it's been good in that way. And it's also been fun, if a little bit stressful. God willing, we're on track to be fully accredited in the spring of 2021, so this upcoming spring, that has multiple implications. Please, Your Eminence, if you could, if you could start by just um, sharing with everybody a little bit about the, the history of the seminary and sort of the five-year path towards uh, you know, the event taking place next week, Absolutely. The seminary is the fruit of, of a vision uh, by Metropolitan, of Metropolitan Chrysostomos, my predecessor. Why is it important for, for a graduate to come from a, an accredited institution? Well, the simplest definition of accreditation is, is this one, provided by our accreditation agency, the Association for Biblical Higher Education, ABHE for short. And it says accreditation is a means of assuring the public that an institution meets accepted standards of quality and integrity. 
our accreditation affects our ability to serve our students and potential students, both in widening the audience for enrollment, the type of people who can enroll in the school, and also in what a, a degree from our program produces for our students. The St. Furious Orthodox Theological Seminary in Etna, California asks for your prayers. Since its founding in 2015, the seminary has been working towards accreditation for its current Bachelor of Theology and Master of Theological Studies degrees. Accreditation will also enable the seminary to inaugurate new degree programs and to enroll international students. From February 17 to February 19, 2021, members of the seminary administration will be in Orlando, Florida, the Very Reverend Archimandrite Father Dr. Patapios, who is the Dean, and Ms. Gabrielle Ascarian, the Registrar, at the annual meeting of its accrediting agency, the Association for Biblical Higher Education. We ask for your prayers that the St. Fortius Orthodox Theological Seminary will move forward and always be a beacon of orthodoxy and that uh, the seminary will be able to preach the Orthodox faith and adulterate it. God bless you all. church in a very, very busy, um, bustling uh, tourist area, but not something you'd expect to see, but it's a, it's a remarkable testament to the, to the heritage of the, of the Greeks in the United States, um, this particular historical setting. It's very humbling to be here. For his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. To him the Lord hath brought great waters, alleluia. For his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. It's been a great pleasure and joy for us to be, to be attending the services, in my, in my case, to be uh, serving the, the investments in the matters and divine liturgy this uh, beautiful small community and it's, it's a wonderful little church. It's, uh, it's amazing what they've done uh, with all their resources. They've, they've made great sacrifices of their own um, financial sacrifices to, to construct this church and buy the land in the first place, build this. Uh, it's a beautiful church. It's, it's very, very clean and uh, very pleasant experience to serve here. It was, uh, they, they chanted very, very nicely and everybody was very, very, very impressed with their great piety and especially with the, with, the, with the love with which they welcomed us here and, uh, and the wonderful fellowship we had both during the services and after the services throughout the day. It's been a, a very memorable experience. It's shown great support, also great enthusiasm for our seminary, uh, for which we're very grateful. So right now we're sitting in the library of the ABHE headquarters and we're waiting for our first, well, we're waiting for our final interview with the Commission on Accreditation. Yeah. Okay, everyone, well, I'm glad to speak to you again and uh, we'll get we'll get that. Bye bye. Thanks, Gabriel. Yes. Oh, that's, that's a nice phone. Is it an iPhone? Alexei sent us some words of encouragement. Good. He said, A beautiful morning here in Etna. May St. Photios intercede on your father's 
on yours and father's behalf. Go get them. <laughs> and he said, and I know the Metropolitan is also praying for all of us to so oh, be yeah, nervous. Absolutely. You will have, because we also have commissioners on Zoom, mm -hmm. oh, I see. Yeah. and so there will be a camera on you mm -hmm. um, at your table. You won't likely see the camera. In front of you will be a table with the laptop that you'll see the commissioners. It was very exciting and intimidating at the same time. <laughs> same time <yeah. laughs> I'm feeling confident, but a little on edge because it's, 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 you have to actually hear the, the words themselves. They can't, uh, you know, it's, we did, did our part, but uh, it's, it's up to God at this point. Mm -hmm. It's yes. But, but was, oh, they're coming for us. Oh. St. Photios was chosen as our patron by Metropolitan Chrysostomos because of his love for the saint. He saw him as a patron not only of the Orthodox faith, but, uh, but also for, some people argue that he's the father of the modern day book review. He had a great library. He was a great thinker. And even before his enter into active service in the church, he was well known as a, as a very accomplished intellectual. He was also, needless to say, a, a, a man of great faith. Tonight we recognize two institutions and celebrate with them the achievement of initial accreditation this year. We will recognize each institution individually and the first institution is Indian Bible College, Flagstaff, Arizona. All right, our graveyard. Evidence of squirrels eating acorns. So that is the grave of uh, Metropolitan Chrysostomus of blessed memory whose first year anniversary we just celebrated this past Sunday. What would His Eminence think if he were here and able to see what we have done since his repose? We have, we have invested quite a bit of labor in the cemetery and ossuary focused around His Eminence's sepulcher because we believe he is still with us. We have perhaps to the perhaps with uh, to the limits of our strength and capabilities we have continued his vision. Everything that we undertake here we can we we ask ourselves what would his eminence think about that? Did he did he have such a a notion? Did he leave us with such an idea? And the second institution that we celebrate their achievement tonight, St. Photius. Oh.
what kind of man was Metropolitan Chrysostomos? Well, that's, that is not an easy question. He was, relatively speaking, sleepless in terms of his concerns for the needs of the church and especially his duty in the face of those needs. Didn't want anything wasted on himself, wanted everything to serve the church. He had great love for all of his spiritual children. Thank God all of, the, all of this family that his eminence left gathered together here in Etna. Those who knew him, knew that they had met a giant in our own generation. Deep inside the man convinced you of, of, of greatness, of a great soul, full of the love of God, full of a sense of duty and service, rich in virtue, especially humility, and, and uh, animated by love. Metropolitan Chrysostomos, when you would drive by that building, would say, boy, I wish we had that building. I used to look at his eminence and say, what would you do with it? He must have said it a hundred times. What we really want to do is uh, help you to deepen your inner and spiritual life. 